Welcome to another video. Let's solve this floor equation again. And this is going to be easy for everyone watching if you have already tried it. And you, you have tried it because you already understand what the floor is. Okay, so we're just going to use that. And by the way, the only problem with this equation is knowing the meaning of the floor. Because once you know the floor of X, we can use it to find all the answers that we need to get. Yes, I said all the answers, because there is not just one answer to this equation. Okay, if you're ready, let's get into the video. So let's start by defining what this is. We say that the floor of x, so we know that the floor of x is equal to k. k is an integer, okay? k is an integer. So, we don't know if k is positive or negative, doesn't matter, but it's an integer, okay? And we know that if k is the floor of this, then we know that k is definitely less than or equal to x, or it is less than, and it is less than the next integer after x, which is k plus 1. So this is a very crucial definition we have. What else do we know? Well, that's all we know. That's all we know. So, let's use what we know to get what we want. Remember, every number is defined as an integer plus a fraction. Sometimes there is no fraction part. Sometimes there is a fraction part. I'm going to do other videos where you have the fractional part that has a symbol like this. I'm sure you've seen it before. So this is the fractional part of X. This is the floor of X. And this is the ceiling of X. And the three of them may be combined together in the next equation, the next video I'm going to do. I don't know yet until I'll sit down and figure something out. But for now, let's go here. We know that any x that you write in any equation, it is always this integer plus a fraction part. So we're going to call that fraction part or the fractional part d. That's what I used in the other videos. So I'm going to say, let the number we're looking for, which we don't know if it's going to be an integer or um, a mixed uh, fraction, let x be equal to this k plus some fraction. Okay, the k is the floor and this is the number. So you can see k is less than because d is always a positive number. Let me just write d is greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero. That's another thing. So now we have these two conditions. Now I'm going to use this in the original equation and we're just going to solve it nicely and we get our answer. So let's go. Let's say that 3 times the floor of x, we said the floor of x is k, minus 4 times x, we said x is k plus d, is equal to 0. Now, are there shorter ways I could have just inferred from here what this is going to be? Yes, but I try to avoid those things because sometimes things are so complicated that it is not as obvious as this is. Okay, so with this, let's try and solve this. We're going to have 3k minus 4k minus 4d equals 0. What's 3k minus 4k? That's negative k uh, minus 4d equals 0. Um, let's move. What do we move? Let's move um, this to this side. We're going to have negative k is equal to 4d. So if we divide both sides by 4, 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth of k is d. So d is equal to negative 1 fourth of k. This is very important. So now we know that d is negative 1 over 4 times k, which means Wait, there's so many things you can see here now. We said d is a fraction part, right? It is greater than zero. If d is greater than zero, and we already said this is negative, then our k must be negative, or at least it's not positive. 
but let's assume we can't see that from this these two signs let's just go back to what we said we said let x be k plus d so we know that x is equal to k plus d which in this case will now be k plus what is our d it's negative 1 over 4 k so this is the same thing as subtracting 1 fourth of k from k so x is 3 fourth of k nice so the solution to this problem is 3 over 4 multiplied by k all we need to do now is find what k is if we can find k life is beautiful okay so let's go back where did we use k in the definition right here we said k is less than or equal to x and x is less than k plus 1 so we're going to go back and say recall recall that k is less than or equal to x and this is less than k plus 1 strictly so this means i can replace x with this so i can go here and say k is less than or equal to 3 over 4k and it's less than k plus 1. so because i just want everything to look nice why can't we just multiply every single section of this by 4 so we have everything nicely in a linear form so here we go that was a terrible line but We'll take it like that. Here, what do we have? Multiply everything by 4. I'm going to have 4k is less than or equal to 3k. And I'm going to have 4k plus 4 on this side, less than 4k plus 4. So because we're looking for k, we can separate these two and we separate this inequal complex inequality or compound inequality into two separate inequalities and find k in either case, just like you're solving a quadratic inequality. Okay, so in this case, you're going to have 4k is less than or equal to 3k and 4, 3k rather, 3k is less than 4k plus 4. So those are the two parts we're going to get. Here, we can move this 3k here. So we have 4k is le minus, sorry, minus 3k is less than or equal to 0. 4k minus 3k is k. So k is less than or equal to 0. So this tells us that whatever value of k you get will be less than 0 or at most will be equal to 0. If k is less than 0, k must be a negative number, which actually confirms this claim we made. Okay, now let's go to the second part. The second part, 3k minus 4k is less than 4. Negative k is less than 4, which means k, if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you have to flip this sign to greater than, and this would be negative 4. So, if you combine this answer and this answer, what you have is that k is less than or equal to 0, but k is greater than negative 4. So, if you combine them, you know that negative 4 is less than k, and k is less than or equal to 0. Remember, k is an integer. So, we're looking for all the integers that are greater than negative 4, but less than or equal to 0. So if you list them out, k must be a member or an element in the set of negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. These are all the candidates that k could be. Any of these will satisfy the equation. So what is x? We go back and say x is equal to, where did we say it? 3 fourths of k. So when k is negative 3, we just need to multiply this by 3 fourths. What's multiply by 3, you get negative 9, divide by 4 is negative 9 over 4. So x is an element in the set of negative 9 over 4, negative 2. Uh, multiply this by 3, 
that's negative negative six over four which is going to be negative three over two negative three over two then multiply this by negative one it's going to be negative three over four negative wait which one is bigger what am i doing is this math good times negative two Whew. my math is terrible at this point i'm trying to multiply this as negative three fourths but negative three fourths is oh yeah 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 negative three fourths <laughs> And the last option, you multiply this by zero, you get zero. So these are all the possible values of x for which that equation will be true. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.